I'm going to take a wild guess and say that when you learn to drive, you learned how to use both pedals, the gas pedal and the brake pedal. And, and potentially, if you were really lucky and learned how to drive on a, on a manual, then you may have even had a third pedal to deal with, the clutch pedal there. But uh, I'm going to assume you learned how to use all of those because they all perform a particular and important function, right? And if not, your drives may look a lot like this, right? where you're scared, the other person's scared because you don't really know what you're doing because you only know half the story. The same thing is true in communication if we exclude listening from the equation. Uh, we spend a lot of time on focusing on reading and writing and speaking and, and our verbal communication, nonverbal communication, but we spend very little time being taught how to listen well and, and learning how to do that well. So uh, at the start of this series, I'd just like to go through what are some of the basics of listening, which is a critically important skill, as we'll find out but we don't know enough about it and we don't focus on it enough and we don't do it well. So let's focus on some of the listening basics now. And then in, in other videos, we'll get into some of the more detailed information about listening, but let's start with the beginning. Uh, and the beginning is what is listening? So how do we define listening? Listening is the active process through which we make meaning out of assess and respond to what we hear. So you can see there's a lot going on there. It's more than just the hearing process, which is part of it, as, as we'll see. But listening is an active process. It's something we have to be actively engaged in. We have to flip that switch and choose to do it in order to do it effectively. It's also a part of listening is making meaning out of some what somebody else is saying. So we're we're not only seeking to understand, but also interpret that information. Then we're also assessing it, possibly evaluating and judging what that person is saying, analyzing it a bit. And then we're responding. Listening, as we'll find out, is not a one way street. It's a two way process. It, it involves both incoming stimuli and also a response that we provide, whether that's verbal or nonverbal. And again, we'll get into all that type of stuff and, and focus specifically on responses in a later video. But for now, what we need to know is that listening is an active process through which we make meaning out of, assess and respond to what we hear. So now that we know what listening is, why does it matter? Why is it important? Doesn't it just happen naturally? Well, no, it doesn't just happen naturally. And, and it is quite important. As we know from research, listening is the most utilized component of communication. So when we look at reading, writing, speaking, and listening as the components of communication, um, we know that we do more listening than we do anything else. All those other three combined don't add up to the time that we spend listening as communicators. So it's the thing we do most as communicators and as such it behooves us to to do it well because we spend so much time doing it the other thing we know is that it's a critical skill in both our professional and personal context so in your personal life i mean how often have you heard in your personal life you're not listening to me or you don't listen well you're not you know listening effectively it can benefit us just so much in our personal relationships it's also though a critical skill in a professional context just a quick google search which you can do yourself Google top communication skills in the workplace. That's what I did. And this is just a screen grab of what I found. Both the top listings, the number one thing on each of these lists is listening. Active listening or listening is a critical skill in the workplace. Employers want people who are able to listen to their instructions, their supervisor's instructions, but also listen to their coworkers, listen to their clients, listen to the people who uh, work beneath them and are, and are their subordinates and, and just be able to listen effectively. Right. And so if this is such an important skill as it is, as we, as we're seeing here, if it's so important, then why don't we know how to do it better? Well, there, you know, part of the reason is when we look at these skills, you know, the one that we learn first is listening, right? We can listen before we can speak, read or write or do any of that other stuff. So we, we learn how to do it first. We learn how to listen first. I mean, think about you know, children, infants, even, you know, toddlers, they know the meaning of the word no. I mean, they hear it all the time, right? And they know what it means. They don't always act like they know what it means, but they know what it means. We learn how to listen and, and, and we know how to do that before we know how to communicate in any other way. Well, it's also the most used as we just discovered. We use listening. We, we are engaged in listening more than reading, writing, and speaking combined. Okay? And yet when we think about how much instruction you've received over the years in listening, specifically focused on how to listen effectively, then we find it's the least taught. We learn how to do these other things way more. Think about the amount of time you spent in school learning how to write well, learning how to read properly and effectively, even learning how to speak. You probably had a public speaking class or even just some instruction on, you know, when you were given book reports, you got feedback and how to speak well and things like that. But 
How much time? I'm willing to bet that, that few, if any of you listening to this video, watching this video have uh, had specific instruction on listening, even in the form of a, a short video or series like this or unit like this. You probably haven't had any. So is it any wonder that we don't do it better, that we're really ineffective in our listening skills? Uh, it's a skill. And as any skill, it takes practice and it takes it takes first some instruction on how to do it. Then it takes practice on learning how to do it well and, and really refining that skill. We don't get any of that. We we aren't taught anything. So we develop these poor skills that we then, you know, just repeat over and over again in a, in a bad way. We pick up these bad habits. So we're it's not surprising that we don't listen very well when we don't receive any instruction at it. In order to break down the listening process, we're going to look at things uh, through the, the lens of what we call the hurrier model of, of listening, right? Of, of the listening process. Um, there are other models that, that describe the listening process. This is just the one that I, uh, that I like and that I use um, to explain listening. And we'll have a whole other video on the hurrier model and the details of it, but you can see it here. The, the hurrier, the letters just stand for each of these uh, words. There, it's an acronym. So you see, we start with hearing, then we have uh, involved some understanding, interpreting and evaluating in different and uh, different ways and in, at different levels, depending on the context and depending on what we're doing. Listening then also, though, involves uh, some degree of remembering, whether that's really short term memory or long term memory it, or somewhere in between there. Um, the memory is a part of the listening process and remembering information. And then finally, as we said, listening is not a one way street. It's a two way process that involves responding, whether that's verbal responses, nonverbal responses. It's, you know, in some way indicating that we are hearing what they're saying, that we are we are actively listening and that we're understanding to a certain extent, you know, more or less. Depending on, again, the context, responses will take on different forms. You will have a whole separate video on just responding uh, that you can check out because responding is such an important part of this process. But you can see there's more to the listening process than just what we might think of as hearing, right? Hearing is a, a, an important initial part of that process. It's hard to listen if you can't hear, uh, but it involves so much more than just hearing. It extends into these other areas of understanding, interpreting, evaluating, remembering, and responding. And then, of course, we have this undercurrent, you know, kind of resting under and over and around all of this of what we call a frame of reference. Everything that we experience, everything that we process goes through, you know, what I think of as this filter between our senses and our brain called our frame of reference. And that frame of reference is built of and made up of all these things you see here, your beliefs, your attitudes, your values, your culture, your experiences, your interests, your biases, all of these get stuck into a blender and, and, and out comes your frame of reference. And that's going to be totally unique for every person. So we're all hearing things and trying to understand things and so forth, but we're doing it differently because it's being processed through an absolutely unique frame of reference, okay, which may be uh, more or, or less similar to somebody else's frame of reference we may have us hearing and listening and coming out with two totally different interpretations of something. Right. So anyway, frame of reference really kind of underlies and lies under and, and around and over everything um, in communication, including the listening process. So again, we'll have a whole different video on, on the listening pro the hurrier model. Um, you can check that out. There's a whole different video on responding. You can check that out as well. Um, and then we have a separate video as well on just some of the challenges of listening, some of the things that make listening difficult, right? And those will all be linked below. You can check those out uh, linked in the, in the comment or in the information section below. The last thing I want to just chat about briefly is just that there are different types of listening. We engage in listening in different ways and different types of listening. Um, and we think of it kind of like a tree because we, we start, you know, in the, uh, with the sapling and the roots of, of one kind of listening, and then we grow into these others really. And, and it becomes the, the leaves and the branches of the listening tree, so to speak. But it starts with discriminative listening. Discriminative listening just means essentially, what are you listening to? We have a, a tremendous problem these days with information overload and with just, you know, our brains taking us different places and things. So uh, listening is hard. As we said, it's an active process. So we have to really decide what am I going to listen to? That's discriminative listening. Am I listening to this thing over here or am I listening to this thing on the, on the other side of the world? Am I listening to the TV or am I listening to my, my friend or family member who's trying to talk to me? I'm making a choice about what I'm going to, to, where I'm going to give my attention to, to what stimuli I'm going to give my attention. That's discriminative listening. First, just making that decision of 
This is what I'm going to listen to. This is what I'm paying attention to. That's discriminative listening, and that's where we all start with our listening skills. Uh, the next kind of level that we would look at is informational listening. And as the name would suggest, it's just listening for information. We're not really trying to, to evaluate or assess information at this level. We're, think of it as though you're in class, and although you should have a little bit of, you know, you should be critiquing your instructors a little bit and be critical of that information, but for the most part, you're there because they're giving you information. So we're just trying to take it in. Or when we're getting instructions on something at work, how a process works at work, or how to get to somebody's house, you know, especially before we had Google Maps and things like that. We used to have to have people give us directions and write them down and listen well, right? That's just listening for information. I'm just listening to, to take it in, remember it, and, and try and process it in, in the most basic sense of, of receiving that information. The next level would be what we call critical listening. This is where we do begin to assess and evaluate that information. Um, first, at, at, the, at, at its core for, is this information, does this information ring true to me? Or is it, does it not seem as, as accurate to me? Or does it not seem uh, you know, like, it, like it's true? So if we decide it's true and we're listening or, or false or whatever, then we get into things like, I'm analyzing this for what's the quality of this information? How does this relate to me? How am I evaluating? I'm, I'm judging. I'm analyzing this information with those critical listening skills. And, uh, and this is something we should do more than we probably do. We should be doing this when we're watching TV, when we're watching the news, when we're listening to politicians, when we're, you know, listening to somebody's story. We, we should be listening critically to, to, to see if this lines up with what we see as reality and, and how accurate this information is, how credible is this person and so forth. So we engage in critical listening. Then at the top of the tree, the leafy parts, the, 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 the really what I think is the most challenging type of listening is empathic listening, where we're exhibiting empathy. We're listening to somebody with the goal of putting ourselves into their shoes, seeing things from their perspective. Um, it really requires not only effective listening skills, but a high degree of emotional intelligence as well to do this effectively. So it is, I think, the most challenging type of, of listening. Um, but it's really important, especially in our interpersonal relationships, that we develop some empathic skills for when our friend comes over and has something they want to get off their chest. They're having a rough day or they're having issues with their significant other or they, they broke up with somebody. We can we can be empathic or the opposite side. When they're having a great day, we can listen to how wonderful their day is and support them in that way. And, and so we can engage in empathic listening. Um, and so these are really important relational listening skills, empathic listening is. So um, we want to develop those skills as well. Again, these exist, they, they come along as we, as we learn. We first have to learn how to be discriminative in our listening and be able to focus our attention on, on something as a listener. Then we can work on listening for information, listening for critical aspects, and then developing those empathic skills as well. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of what listening is. We've defined it for you and, and just talked about some of the basic aspects of listening. Again, we'll get into further detail on this in uh, other videos that we have available for you that, that you'll find links for that in the information below. But just wanted to lay a foundation for what is listening. It's probably more than we thought it was before. And, uh, and what are some of the important aspects? How does it work? Those types of things. If you have questions about the listening process or anything related to listening at all, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that you will have a renewed understanding of listening and appreciation for what goes into listening. And, uh, and we'll begin to have the foundational understanding so that you can improve your own skills as a listener.